I'm Julie Bullitt. I've been a family therapist for over 30 years. I'm David Bullitt. I've been a divorce and family lawyer for more than 35 years. Together, we have been married for more than 37 years. In our professional practices, the two of us have been witnesses to individuals and families struggling with life's most difficult challenges. In this podcast, we will talk about the conversations we have had, the conversations we should have had, and those that every relationship needs to have in order to find success, happiness, and fulfillment. This is Conversations for Couples, the podcast. Welcome back. Conversations for Couples, the podcast. Episode two. Episode two. We're talking about sex. sex. You love talking about sex. Uh, but but I, I do. But but why is it why is it so hard for people to talk about? Well, sex and money are probably the You two. missed the joke. You totally missed the joke. Why is it so oh. hard? Remember I said, why is it so hard? For people to talk about sex. Well, sometimes it is hard, and then sometimes <laughs> it isn't. And if it isn't hard, then it's harder then it's to talk problem. about okay, sex. Okay, okay. See, all right. Well, you got to you, you did better the second time around. Okay. We're, but we don't edit things here, right? There's no script and there's no editing, and so there you go. You missed your line, but, but you got it eventually. There tonight, is some there's drinking. Tonight there's yeah, there'll be a little cocktails tonight. If we're going to talk about sex, we're going to drink. Mm -hmm. Okay, because listen, some of the probably some of the greatest sexual es escapades and probably some of the worst sexual experiences <laughs> have occurred when people have had something to drink, maybe too much, too little, whatever the case may be. But, but seriously, why is it so difficult for people to talk about sex? It is because sex is vulnerability. When you're having sex or talking about sex, you're very vulnerable. What, what do you mean? What do, what do you mean you're vulnerable? Talking about sex makes you vulnerable, and how does it make you vulnerable? Well, because it's it's a we grow up. I mean, this being in this you know culture that we're in, sex is one of those things that we're trained and taught that it's private and that you don't talk about it. Okay, okay. So, so doing something contrary to what we were trained and taught is a vulnerability is what you're talking about. Well, it makes, yes, it's, it's, it's talking about something that's difficult and not natural. It's not natural to talk about. Correct. Okay. Correct. And not comfortable for a lot of people. For a lot of people. Yeah. And why, why, you know, so, so, okay, let me ask the question again, but from a different angle, why is it uncomfortable to talk about? Because it's per such a, because it's so personal. Because it's so personal and also backgrounds, how people, okay. how people are raised. Okay. Um, and also if there's been any trauma history, any sexual assault of any kind that can make sex even more difficult to talk about and also have. Right, so, so, uh, so different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the different backgrounds piece that also sort of peels into Differing expectations. Absolutely. Right, right? Uh, so, so let's let's do a for instance. Okay. Okay. Yes, All but right. I I do want to talk about something else for one second. Go ahead. Take two I, I need to talk about this <laughs> delicious coca. Cheat no, not coca. <laughs> Coquito. <laughs> Coquito. Okay. Coquito. I um our neighbor. <laughs> Pedro and Kira, who live next door, make yes. this delicious drink around the holidays, and they gave us a full bottle. And I just like cracked a, it like open. It's like a Sunday. It's kind of like an eggnog, <laughs> and it has some cinnamon. It has some coconut in it, mm -hmm. and some rum, and it is delicious. All right, so 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 maybe it won't be as hard for you to talk about sex as difficult if you keep. Swigging the coquito. Swigging the coquito. Yeah. I like that coquito. Yeah, yeah. Thank okay. you, anyway, Pedro and Kira. All right, so let's let's let, let's get past the coquito for a second. Although, if you want more, you let me know. I can <laughs> run away and come back before she finishes answering the question. But but let, let's talk about this different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and you know, and we we all were teenagers. Yes. Right. We all had were raised in different ways. Right. Religiously different homes right. and what your parents talk to you about sex or what they didn't talk to you about sex. I mean, some families are very open about sex and some families do not talk about sex. Well, there were, you know, and, and, and again, as we work our way up, <laughs> sorry, you keep on I, coming back to that. <laughs> as we work our way up to, you know, relationships and couples, you know, who, who are together now, mm -hmm. you know, some of the basis for this background that you're talking about is experiences that you had 
when you were, you know, younger, whether it was a teenager or it was your early 20s, whenever it may have been, whether you had experiences or whether you didn't, you know, and, and, and can't that sort of lead into this sort of, it's difficult to talk about because when I was with this person, this is what we did. And now this is disappointing mm -hmm. or um, I don't really understand what you're asking me. You, you know, right. Tell me about that. Well, it's, I think it's very difficult to talk about sex and about what you want in a sexual relationship. Not a lot of people will say, hey, can you touch me here? Or can you not touch me there? Right. Or can you do more of this? In fact, there's a great book that I highly recommend for anybody that wants to understand more about the sexual response system and about our bodies and the way we respond and understand just sex in general. And it's called Come As You Are. And I cannot remember the, awesome. the author, but you can Google it and it's an excellent book. Not hard to remember the title. No, Come As You Are. Come As You Are. Yeah, okay. great book, okay. and it really helps people understand right. sexual well, response. We'll, we'll put a link to uh, that book uh, on our page so someone can find it if you find it. Come As You Are, author as of the moment, uh, unknown. But we will we'll figure it out. We'll yes, we will out. figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. So, so you know, so as a youth, you have mm -hmm. certain experiences sexually. I mean, many of us do. Some of us don't. Some of us wait. Mm -hmm. Some of us wait. And don't have those experiences until we're married or until we're late later in life. Mm -hmm. For those of us who had those experiences earlier, mm -hmm. um, um, that could, I guess, could prove to be, uh, make it difficult as you start to get yourself involved with someone more emotionally, you've gotten older because things didn't go the way you wanted them to go. Right. Right. And, you know, it's, it's very, it's often very time, very interesting because the first time people have sex you hear a lot about being disappointed and yeah. you hear a lot about how it wasn't, <laughs> wasn't quite the way I thought it was going to mm -hmm. be, or it was over before it started or something like that. So I do think that, you know, early sexual experience, it often can be disappointing and you're learning and it's like your oh, first, yeah. it's like your yeah. first pancake, <laughs> your, your first pancake that you make is never a good pancake. That's and, very funny, you know, and and, it, and it's true. And I've said this to you before, you know, for the, there was a lot of folks out there that I had relations with, you know, when I was younger. And, and, and again, I've done this before and I'll do it again. I'm sorry. Okay. One big blanket. I, I you know, Sam Kinison, a, a comedian who's since mm -hmm. passed away, used to make a joke. They didn't give you pamphlets in, right. in, in what to do and how to do it. And so, uh, you know, when you're younger and you're learning, or maybe not learning the right things mm -hmm. or doing things. And and now, of course, and we're talking about this in another episode, you have so much available to you to see what people allegedly do in, in pornography and in videos and so forth. Well, I actually consider myself very lucky that you are very well educated. And would you like to share that story about how you learned about women's an anatomy and how that, <laughs> you know, how that came to be? Because okay, I yeah, think that's okay. a great story, actually. Okay, okay, okay. sure, sure. So again, <laughs> and, and sadly, this lesson was learned after I had had some experiences with, with, with certain women who um, probably were very happy for me to leave. <laughs> so, okay. So, so yeah, so, so I had no idea. Right. I had no idea that biologically there was something on a woman that would make her feel good. I knew what made me feel good. You just stick your hand on that thing and it was, their eyes would roll, <laughs> roll up in the back. But I had no idea that even existed. And I used and to- And we're talking about the clitoris, honey. Yes, we're talking about the clitoris. <laughs> okay, yes, we're yes. diving right into diving, the clitoris. Diving right in. So, but I didn't, I, I seriously, I didn't know. And so- and it wasn't, Are we allowed to say clitoris on the podcast? We can say whatever we want. It's okay, our, good. It's our podcast. Okay, People can cool. turn it off if they choose to. Okay, but, but, sorry. But no, we can say whatever we want to say. But my point is that that I that I didn't know, and I, and so for that period of time from when I first began having sexual experiences until not not long before I met you. Thank God he learned before he met me. <laughs> but it wasn't that it wasn't terribly far. And then I was close to graduating college when you and I met. So, but, you know, maybe it was a year or so before that. I don't know, whatever it was. So I used to work in a men's clothing store and and a fellow that I worked with said to me, you know, this is what you got to do. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? And he took out a sheet of paper. It actually was the back of one of those old credit card slips, mm -hmm. the old ones where you, where you ran the credit cards. Through. And he drew a picture for me of where the clitoris was 
on a woman's anatomy. So <laughs> Did he get I'm, in the right spot? Yeah, I was <laughs> no, and, and I carried that thing with me because 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 until I figured it out, which took a few times, because you know, let's let's be honest. Like, did yeah, did, not did like, you laminate? <laughs> didn't laminate? Didn't laminate? But let's let's be serious. You know, there, there were those. <laughs> Uh, you you couldn't like pull it out and look at it. Hang on one second. I'll be right with, be right with you. I got to see if I, I got the right spot. I did. Well, wouldn't I, you know if you were in the right spot by the girl's reaction? Yeah, but some girls act certain ways. Some girls act different ways. We're getting way off the track here. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, you know, some some people, at, you know, are, are more verbal or more yep. more oral. Yeah. You know, verbal. Let's stick with that. And some, you know, some are not. So no, but but but. I needed that drawing, mm -hmm. right? I, I, and that's what got me to understand, in, in fairness, all jokes aside, if it wasn't for him, God knows, you might have never gone out with me after the second I probably wouldn't have given you a second date. <laughs> anyway, so learning so, and understanding right. parts, whether it's a female part or a male part or whatever kind of part, and it's really important. I think really a lot important. of people don't, I think a lot, you know, as, as crazy as it sounds, you know, we've spoken with people um, um, in our in our in our work that we do together. As crazy as it sounds, there are some people that just don't know. They really right. don't. Right. They they don't understand it. They don't. You know. They 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 don't know. And and that's not because they're stupid or that they live with their heads in a in a you know. In the, <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go bad in a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. We might have to they edit live, this part out. with their heads in the dirt, right? Or their eyes covered, but because they just they just don't know. And they and because why? Gets back to what we started. They don't talk about it. It's really hard to right. talk about. Right. So anyway, so what can couples do right. to talk about to increase their intimacy, their sexual you know, activity together. Well, I think, I think your, your idea of this, this to me is probably the hardest one of what we're talking about. We're talking about some other ideas, but, but telling your partner what you want, what you like and what you don't like mm -hmm. can be difficult because, be. because for a couple of reasons, one is you might feel embarrassed. Mm -hmm. And two is your, the partner, your partner might say, well, what, why didn't, what was wrong with this or what was wrong with that right. and take it sort of personally. So that, that discussion can be difficult. I think that yeah. can be difficult. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to throw out another book that um, I have recently read and you actually uh, read part of it with me and that's called Sex Talks. Yes. And um, it, that is written by a couple, actually, okay. a woman who's a therapist and her husband, and I don't remember their names as <laughs> well. all right. We'll, and we'll, we'll put that, we'll, we'll put, put that, that link as well. So yeah, yeah. Sex Talks. And that and that's uh, conversations that couples can have that will help open up the discussions around sex. And there was so many good uh, te techniques and tidbits of information in there. And one of the things that I really liked that you and I did was they they had a like a survey, a questionnaire. Oh yeah, yeah. And they asked questions about like what would you would you do this? Would you do that? Would you do this? And it was really interesting the way they phrased it because it wasn't just like would you do this but would you do this if your partner wanted to do it and there was a lot of things that we talked about like we'd never really talked about doing that but hey if you wanted to do that i would try that and it sort of opened up the whole hmm. possibility list okay. of things to try in uh -huh. the bedroom so anyway that's a great book too. make a note of that but make a note of it okay. um that's a great book to read um okay. and it also talks about how to start to talk about sex. All right. So, so there's some books out there. There's some that. books and it's great to read books as a couple. Our first book, uh, the five Co conversations for couples, we have five core conversations for couples. Well, I sort of, you know, I shorthand botched it up, botched it up. Yeah, anyway, okay, this book that we wrote, <laughs> yeah. it has a chapter on sex yes. and there are some questions at the end of the yeah. chapter that yeah. people have found very helpful yeah. to talk about just to kind of, Start the conversation. Yeah, we we, we actually saw, saw someone last night who said that they were they did those questions in that section. They laughed and giggled and so forth, but that it was helpful. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so yeah, I, th I think reading books is a good idea. There's some good ones out there, and as Julie mentioned, this sex talk, uh, mm -hmm. sex talks, right? Sex yes, talks. sex talks, sex, sex talks. talks is, yes, is, is an is an excellent one to read. Yeah, I also like the idea, and you came up with this, you know, sort of role playing sort of stuff, mm -hmm. and and. And again, people can feel silly, right? Oh, let's do the policeman uh, arrestee kind of a thing, or whatever, whatever <laughs> right. it may be, right? But, but, but 
and it seems silly, but if you can sort of put yourself into it, it can be kind of fun. Yeah, absolutely. I remember one time you and I went to a restaurant and we pretended we didn't know each other yes. and that we had just met each yes. other and we were talking at the bar. You know, yeah, at the bar. Mm-hmm. And we sort of, it was, it yeah, was kind it was of fun. Sexy. It was, it was. It was sexy. It was new. Yeah. Um, so even doing stuff like that with your partner, you know, role playing or pretending or dressing up, whatever really works for you. And the other really big thing about sex, and it, we've talked about this before, and I will continue to talk about this is, very often there's a mismatched desire right. and that can really get in the way of a relationship. If, especially if you don't talk about it and one person feels rejected or sure. one person, one person feels rejected. The other person feels put upon. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So the dynamics that can happen when there's a mismatch, which there often is a mismatch. I sort of talk about sex as sort of like a thirst level. I drink way more water than you do. You're very thirsty for sex. Very, very thirsty. thirsty for sex. Well, I'm very thirsty for water. <laughs> <laughs> you're almost you're, hatching. You're more. You're more. You're more thirsty for sex. Uh, I'm more thirsty uh, for for water. Okay. So anyway, but understanding that and talking about it versus letting it play yeah. out in the relationship yeah. is so very important. Well, that's that's a perfect place where you see conflict, right? Because is is the bedroom because uh, I'm done asking. I'm done being told not tonight. I'm uh, I'm tired of being rejected. The flip side is. I'm tired of feeling pressured mm-hmm. uh, every night. It's another, it's another, can we do, you know, it's I'm sorry, honey. Back. I'll try not to pressure you so much. <laughs> yeah. He's <laughs> back on the pressure. No, actually more pressure, more pressure. <laughs> more pressure. Get the picture. <laughs> more out. pressure, more pressure. <laughs> but, but no, so, I mean, and that, le- and it's like a snowball kind of thing. Absolutely. It happens in a couple of nights and all this stuff. Yep. It happens a couple of weeks and then it's a couple of months. And before you know it, everybody's sleeping on, you know, in separate beds like they did in uh, the Dick Van Dyke show. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. And so you, you got to be careful of that. Yeah. So be creative, try yeah. to have fun in the relationship. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we've done that was really fun also is we put in different things that in the hat, in the awesome. hat and then you pick out what you're going to yeah. do, whether it's a position or a fantasy or yeah. whatever, some kind of, some kind of something set up. Like you talked about when we met it, when we pretended not yeah. to reach out the restaurant. So put it, and yeah. so I let her off, you know, it was a 10 or 10 minutes early. Mm-hmm. And let her find a place at the bar, and whether there was a second seat or not, it didn't make any difference. She just had to get a place. And then I came in, and we started. And Luckily, was like, there was a seat next to me. There, but it took a little bit. Somebody else was there first. Yeah, I, I didn't go out with him though. <laughs> that's good. That's, I, I, that's I good. didn't start the sex talks with him. <laughs> You're it was good. Know. It was I'm good. Glad to hear that. But but there's it's it's about creativity. It's about the desire to make your relationship better, um, and keep it keep it. Good. Yeah. And it's, and let me just say also that it can be scary to talk about sex and a lot of people are afraid to. And the other thing that happens in relationships is once you stop having sex, it's very easy to let it go by the wayside and become roommates. Yeah. That's, you know, it's interesting because we, we spoke with a lot of couples in that, in, in our second book and, and one couple that was, was really impressive to me without getting into all the details of what their issues were, was that, they made it. They still made it a point to connect through having, you know, being intimate and having sexual mm-hmm. relations with each other. And while other things may have been going south, and certainly sex is not the only thing. The most, it's an important thing. But 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 I think that sort of served as that as that tie that kept them bound. Sorry, Bruce Springsteen. Um, the anchor. Yeah, it just it was sort like of, an anchor. Was able, that, that stayed mm-hmm. there and that in, that gave them time to work through these other things. Yeah. And what did you what did you once say to me that you've never sat with somebody um, in your office as, as someone that's getting divorced and they and they say, oh, our sex life. Yeah, we have fabulous. a great se- we have a great sex life, but. Yeah. Never once. Never once. Years. Exactly. Never so, ever. Yeah. So sex is not the only thing that makes a great relationship, but it's definitely a factor. And it I do, greases the wheel. It greases the wheel. <laughs> and I do want to acknowledge that there's people, there's couples that are in sexless marriages yeah. that for, for many reasons, for physical reasons, for again, there might health, be health yeah. reasons, sexual trauma is something that gets in the way of people having sex. So we're not saying that every relationship has to have sex. But I do think that it's an important piece to be looked at and to be talked about. Good. Sounds good. Let's talk more about it. Let's after go talk. We sign off. I'm going to get some more coconut tea right now. Thank you again for joining us. This is Conversations for Couples, the podcast. See you next time. 
Julie Bullitt is a professionally licensed clinical social worker and family therapist. David Bullitt is a divorce and family lawyer. Julie is not your therapist and David is not your lawyer. This podcast is meant for educational and entertainment purposes only. 